<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to your Passport to Experiential Learning. I'm Emily McLemore. And I'm Melody Smith. And there we go. Hold on to advance. Oh, I we're having advanced. technical difficulties. Nope, there we go. There. <laughs> okay. Hey, there's our notes section. Oh, we lost no. our notes section. So uh, there we go. Okay. So about us. So uh, we are the incoming team for experiential learning, and we are so excited. And there's our little contact information if you need to find us. <laughs> Okay, we are so excited about experiential learning that Melody and I have worked together to come up with the start of a vision and a mission. And one of the things that we have really talked through with um, some of the partners um, for experiential learning is about that we want to provide strategic partnerships with industry, community organizations, and faculty, because our goal is that students work in a hands-on immersive learning environment that prepares them for the challenges and opportunities of a global market, and ultimately empowering them to become lifelong learners and leaders in their field. That is our vision. And then the mission really is to facilitate meaningful experiential learning opportunities that bridge the gap between theory and practice equipping students with the knowledge and skills and competencies necessary for success in today's dynamic workforce. Our goal is that we help faculty do all of these things. So what is Tarleton Beyond? It's an experiential learning team, which is located in the Center for Educational Excellence that promotes and supports faculty as they create an engaged learning process where students learn by doing and reflect on their experience and a hands-on experiences and reflection to connect theories and knowledge learned in the classroom to real-world situations. Simply said, oh, oh there we go. <laughs> experiential learning can be anything beyond the traditional lecture. So anything that provides hands-on experiences to further education and provide real-world examples or opportunities. For example, field studies, community service, service learning, research, capstone courses, entrepreneurship, um, internships, clinical placements. So the field of experiential learning Sorry. <laughs> is much larger than just service learning and study abroad. So it encompasses in-class and out-of-class learning experiences that focus on cognitive, social, and personal outcomes. And that is taken from a meta-analysis um, that we actually have, let's see, Oh, somewhere in the information. <laughs> I thought it was on that slide. Guess not. Okay, so uh, the Tarleton Beyond Experiential Learning categories, these you will recognize are the applied learning experience categories, um, community engaged learning, scholarly activity, internship practicum, leadership, discipline knowledge, and cultural enrichment. Community engaged learning or service learning, what um, a lot of people would know it by, um, is something that um, Dr. Sharon Bowers is um, our lead on, and she really has lots of information about um, community engaged learning. Um, am I on the wrong place? No, you're good. Okay. So, but it is collaborative experiential education where there is service, community, um, and engaged partnership, um, but we'll leave it to her to really explain it well. Let me do the back. Okay. Internship and practicum. This is an area that a lot of um, departments and colleges at the university do a lot of. We are hoping that we can partnership with them um, to track that information better and then also provide more opportunities. Scholarly activity. This can also include the creative activities that are student-centered learning um, that's mentored by faculty and staff or professionals. Um, and I think this is an area that Amber Bozier works a lot in. If I'm wrong, well, yeah, I'm That's my jam. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. Okay, um, leadership. 
this is an opportunity for students to develop their leadership skills. One of the areas that we're working on right now is that we are so excited. We have an inaugural team that is competing for an internship. Um, it's part of a global initiative. And this is a leadership opportunity that our team um, that is, and they're doing fantastic. Uh, just a shout out to Lakin, who is our team captain and her team, that 72 teams applied and they were chosen, 36 were chosen for this and our team is one of them. Okay, discipline knowledge. This is where all of the stuff that we do at the university comes together and is broadened, where we want to take it outside of the classroom, go bigger, better, beyond, and um, seek feedback and make a connection to their content classroom um, materials in a new way. And cultural enrichment. Study away, study abroad. This is an area that you can use within your courses. Um, you can um, ask students to be a part of just in a lot of different ways. One of the things that um, our little, blur little advertisement is that we're hoping to add a global citizenship component um, this next year where students that are interested in study abroad but aren't quite there yet can learn about the process, get a di digital badge, and they can begin a um, their, their journey to um, learn more about the global world so that they can then um, pursue a study away, study abroad. I'm not even doing my notes. <laughs> Melody, what did I miss? Nothing on that one. Okay. I think we're good. We're just what did I miss on the others? You're good. Oh, okay. Awesome. Just trying to work the mouse there. Okay. Okay. So that's you. Oh, that's me. No, that's you. <laughs> that's you. Me. Okay. So why participate in Tarleton beyond experiential learning? We've talked about what the different areas and stuff, but why do it? So benefits to the students, it builds those real world skills. So it takes the information that they're learning in their course and teaches them how to use it once they get out of college. Um, it helps with that transition. Um, it also provides a better understanding of course material. So instead of just sitting there and listening to the information, they're actually out there doing it and applying it, which has been proven to impact their understanding in a very beneficial manner. Um, it improves graduation rate and also increases transition time from college to graduate school and or to their career. So one of the things that we have um, listed there on the slide are two different studies. Um, we are hoping that this next year also we add, um, get our IRB in place so that Tarleton can also show um, the data and we can publish the information about why experiential learning is so important, especially to our first generation um, poverty disadvantaged students that they can do experiential learning and this will help them in their future. And we want to publish that information. Okay. Oh, that's you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So who participates in it, in experiential learning? Really, the answer is everyone. Um, it doesn't have to be any particular um, group or a group of students. It's everyone, every faculty, every student. So um, a lot of these are being done already currently with internships and capstone courses, and we're just not tracking those things. So we want to change that and we need your help to do so. Um, a few of the current opportunities that we have going right now are our intern to learn experiences, the Tarleton Roundup Leadership Team, um, we have alternate spring break, Leadership 101, social work courses, they implement ALEs constantly in all of their work in their courses, um, student teachers, child and family studies, theater education, adapted physical activity, wildlife, and ag communications. And that's just a few of them. So you can see it's a broad group of different um, academic, I can't, areas. areas. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. That's a hard I word. I was thinking though. genres, but I know that's not the appropriate um, word. So anyway, oh. anyone can, anyone can participate. Okay. When do you participate in Tarleton Beyond? So I know it's a sad little <laughs> slide there, but one of the things that um, we, our goal 
is that students will start with their experiential learning in FYS, which really is going to be tied to their duck camp tea week experiences. They will learn about it immediately right then about experiential learning in the process. So yes, sorry. If you're not familiar with the acronym FYS, it stands for first year seminar. Yes. All freshmen take it. Yes. Um, so if we have 2,600 freshmen learn about experiential learning that first couple of weeks of their university experience, then they'll be looking for opportunities to earn cords and to participate in areas beyond the classroom. So then we m- move into town hall, which our government students do. So that's federal and Texas government. And then um, poster sessions. And then they do capstones and internships. And really our goal is that every student has an opportunity to complete an experiential learning activity at least once every semester. The reality is that they're doing it far beyond that, significantly more, but it's not being tracked. And our goal is to get that data so that then we can prove that you faculty are doing an amazing job. You're just not telling people about it. And we want to help you do that. Okay, so lessons learned. Am I, are we at that right Mm -hmm. spot? Okay. Um, So this is from my perspective. I teach theater education. And last semester, I took my theater um, in the classroom, which is the course for secondary theater education majors. And they participated in um, a pretty long process. We took the contest uh, from UIL, which is the governing body for theater for high school. And our, the students created the contest materials as if they were students in the contest to create exemplar materials that they will use as teachers. And what I realized is that I really need to start with the learning outcome that the students are using um, that right now that they're not maybe showing as much growth as they as they need to. It's not just creating something that's fun. It's creating using um, the process to build mastery in a new way and that I need to budget my time a little bit um, heavier on the front end. It takes a lot to implement it from the start, but once it's in process, it really worked. But that was some, that is a lesson that I would offer to faculty that are just implementing a new process or a new experience is that it's going to take a lot of time at the beginning in order to do it well. But once it's created, then you have a product that you can use in the future. And then find out about resources and ask questions. You know, I had the opportunity to ask Sansi a jillion questions about the process. And so now we, Melody and I, are in, the, in, in this seat ready to help you to answer questions. Now, we're still going to be asking Sansi first, <laughs> and then we'll come and give you the answer. Um, but, you know, half, after this next year, hopefully we'll be on top of our game. But the the opportunity that the students had to actually go through this entire creation was amazing. And I'll show you the, the picture isn't the best, but it was their work was on display in the Fine Arts Center, the Clyde Wells, uh, for a, over a month. And we had two display cases, and there was a little blurb about experiential learning and the process and what the students did. And we had grant funds that were given for experiential learning because these were resources that the students needed that were bigger and beyond what an actual course would, would take. So I don't have students buy a a textbook. We use the affordable course materials, but having students buy makeup and markers and lots of those elements that really aren't necessary to teach the class, but are necessary to do the project. I got grant funds for those and the students were so excited. And now what's really exciting to me is that in the fall, this next fall, a year after the class, these students will take their materials that they made to a contest in September for the theater con- the theater education contest, and they will present their, their work um, basically as a capstone, and it will be judged by the um, adjudicators, and they will be given feedback, and they have the opportunity to earn funds that would help them in student teaching. So we're taking what we did and applying it in multiple ways, and that is a fun um, I mean, I call it fun. That is um, 
it transcends the class, which is super exciting. And let's see, where are we now? There we go. Look at that. Okay. So on this final slide, we have our Instagram handle and our Twitter handle. Um, Please, if you don't currently follow us, look us up and follow us. We post a lot of neat pictures of what's going on, um, opportunities that will arise and pictures of our students and what they're doing. Um, We've also got our website on on there and our email at Tarleton Beyond. It's tarletonbeyond at tarleton.edu. So if you ever get in there and you're interested um, in trying to do something or adding something to your courses or just want to talk to us about it, email us and we'll set up a time to visit with you. I look forward to hearing from you. So if anybody has any questions, we can open it up at this time. Dr. McLemore, from the faculty perspective, I know you talked about, uh, you know, budgeting time on the front end. Um, What do you think is like the hardest part of the development piece? Not even necessarily the implementation, but like the development Um, of an applied experience? So I think the hardest piece was looking at it and saying, okay, I want them to learn this this skill. I took an outcome from the course and said, how do I allot enough time to make it worthy of the experience that it wasn't a throwaway and it wasn't um, a like, Oh, we're just going to do this fun activity just because it's fun and it had to be worth the time. And I think that was the hardest piece is figuring out how do you do the engagement without losing too much time? Um, some some of the work the students did in class and I gave them class time to start the found, the foundation. And then I said, go do it outside of class to finish it. And then we came back. So I one of the things that I would say is that Melody and I've talked about is implementing some project management into the process and have it and use it like a project-based learning activity where there's checkpoints. I should have built more checkpoints into the process and then also introduced it earlier so that the students, as we were talking about content, they could tie it back in more times. And I think that's what I'll do in the future is give more opportunities for questioning and brainstorming and then move on with other content and then come back and do more of a scaffold. Um, and that's, that's some, that's an area that I will use as growth for me. That's fantastic. And then I know the students um, at the end of the experience reflect on, on what they've done. Were there any themes that kind of came through in your students writing about their experience? So what's interesting is that while these are theater students and theater majors, none of them had actually done this contest in high school. They had heard about it, but they had no prior knowledge. And then they are expected to be able to teach this next year or, you know, when they go into the classroom. So for them, it was eye opening. What they thought they could do, they found out that maybe they didn't know how to do. (laughs) And then some areas they were really focused in and were able to do it really well. So they had these little pockets of knowledge, but they weren't well-rounded. And so the reflection was this required them and forced them to process better um, for long-term. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? (laughs) No? If not... If not, you've got a little bit of, we're going to give you a little time back. So um, please join in on, we've got a full day of sessions today, tomorrow, and Thursday. So please come back and join us. Thank you for taking the time to come listen to us. Goodbye. Bye.